Father, tonight, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, so much for this opportunity to come before these your sheep. Father, thank you, Father, tonight for your word. Father, it is our sincere prayer that you would bless our time together. Yes. Father, speak to us tonight as only you can. Father, we pray for revelation and insight, God, to your word, for your word is entered to life. Father, I pray for the ears of the hearer, God, on tonight, that we might hear accurately, God, and then do what the word declares us to do. We bless you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. If you always say, pray y'all have a good day, baby, uh, bring my marches down a little bit. Bring me down something a little bit. I'm bringing them up here. If you always say, pray y'all have a good day today. If you didn't, it's getting ready to get real good right now. Glory to God. I pray you all came with uh, expectation on tonight. I want to thank God for our viewers tonight. Can you all bless God for our viewers tonight? Amen. 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 All right, right quick, Proverbs 18, Proverbs 18 chapter, Proverbs chapter number 18, Proverbs the 18th chapter, once we look at a very familiar passage of scripture here on tonight, thank you, Proverbs 18 verses 20 and 21, Proverbs 18 verses 20 and 21, are you there? Watch this, the Bible says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Did you all catch that? Mm -hmm. I'll read it for you again. The Bible said, a man's belly shall be satisfied, watch this now, with the fruit of his lips. In other words, whatever comes from your mouth, that's the fruit of your lips. And it says, with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. In other words, the more you say a thing, that's, that, that will cause or bring increase into your life. Now watch it, it says, death and life is in your mouth. Amen. You know what just said? Death and life, come on, say death and life, death is, and life. is in my mouth. In my come on, come on, say death and life death is in my mouth. And watch it now, they that love it, that love what? That love the words that come out of their mouths. Mm -hmm. That's good. That love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, let me see if I can give you the LDS version. Write this down. Whatever it is you plant, that's what will come up. Amen. Whatever you plant, that's what will come up. I'll say that again. Whatever you plant, that's what will come up. Now, that's important, you all, because... One of the things we do, and I, I dealt with this on last time, is that many times we take for granted the words that come from our mouths. I'm sorry, let me give you tonight's lesson title. You can write this down. What you say can be used to help you. What you say can be used to help you. Now, the first part of that lesson we talked about, what you say can be used against you. This is part one of a different series I'm talking about. Of what you say can be used to help you. Come on, class, say what I say, what I say can, be can be used to help me. Now, we discovered you all on the last time we were talking about that many times it is our words, the words of our mouths, that get us in the most trouble. And sometimes we allow what we feel, how we feel, our emotions, and things that we see to cause us to say things about folks or say things for our lives that we really don't want to happen. And the problem with that is we are seeing the results of the things that are coming out of our mouths and many times it is what you are what you are saying is not really what you want to see. I heard a pastor say this. He said that every time you say something out of your mouth, what he said in order to fix that problem, what you ought to say is and this is exactly how I want it to be. Oh, that's okay. So apparently that, that got me. That's good. Because if I say that, what I'm doing is checking the words from my mouth. If before you say it, you say this is exactly how I want it to be. And so no longer will you say my feet killing me. Because if you say it, that's exactly how I want it to be. That's good. Come on, you won't say these kids get on my last nerve. Because if you say that, what you're saying is, this is exactly how I want it to be. 
Are you hearing me? You will no longer say, I hate this job. Because what you're saying is, this is exactly how I want to be. Okay? You won't say my husband getting on my nerve. Because what you're saying is, this is exactly how I want to be. Now, you say, Pastor, where did this thought process come from? I'm glad you asked. Because when you look in Genesis, everything God wanted, he said it. And what he was saying was, whatever I say, this is exactly how I want to be. Ooh, somebody should have been shot right there. And so watch this now. If that's then the way God did it, because you and I are made in his image and his likeness, then watch this now. Whatever comes out of our mouth, our mouths, we can say, God, this is exactly how I want to be. Now, the Bible says we are snared by the words of our mouths. Tell a person by the say, your words will trap you. Your words will trap you. Let me ask you this. Anybody ever said something and you wish to God, you can take, take it back. Yes. All of us have been there. But we let things come out of our mouth, and especially if what we said came to pass. We're saying, oh, dear God, I didn't mean to say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> the Bible says, I'm the abundance of a heart, the mouth speaks. God says, you're going to say what you mean under pressure. Come on, anybody ever wish to God that you kept your mouth shut under pressure? Yes. Come on, anybody ever say, oops, under pressure? Mm -hmm. But watch this, words, you all, are like bullets being fired from a gun. I've never seen any bullet turn around and come back because you, because you speak in tongues. Amen. You go, bang, oh, gross, not bad, naked, no, somebody going to be shot. And so, so are your words. You have to be careful about how you direct your words. Now, this is important, and I believe that God gave us this, you all, because I believe that as we begin to govern our words and, and send them out on purpose, come on, class, say on purpose. on purpose. As we purposely send out the right words on purpose, that as we enter into a new year, if you start confessing the right thing here, then you will start seeing next year or sometime down the road what you started saying some time ago. Yes. Are you following me? Amen. You see, words, you all, are like seeds. Come on, say words, words. are seeds. Are Come seeds. on, class, say words, words. Are, seeds. are seeds. Your words, watch this now, you, are, you and I are the ones responsible, Elder Green, for planting the right words. Mm -hmm. See, when Jesus was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness after fasting in 40 days, it was his responsibility to say it is written. Notice in the text what you don't see. You don't see anywhere in the, in the Bible where the Bible says, and God intervened, or God told Jesus what to say. When the devil came in, put Jesus under pressure, it was his responsibility. Oh God, I'm getting way ahead of myself now. I'm getting out into next week's lesson. It was his responsibility to say the right thing. Are you following me? I wish God would come and check us and, and, and pull us by the back of our head before we said the wrong thing, but that's not what God's going to do. He said the responsibility is on you to make sure you keep your mouth in order no matter what life brings to you. Amen. Now, how many folks can testify that life will bring you some crazy stuff? Oh, yes. Come on. Come on, it'll come through your kids, come through your wife, your husband, your job, the dog, come on, come on. It, trouble will come from all different directions. It will. And many times, so the man, it catches us off, off guard. It catches you by surprise. And before you know it, you will find out what's really in your heart by what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can say it like this. There is no such thing as a Christian cursing by accident. All right. Because you say what's really in you. Right? right? right. You say what's really in you. Get a person alone long enough and they'll say what's really in their heart. Right? And so we have to be careful that the Bible says let your words, watch this now, be seasoned with grace. Because if the Bible says in Proverbs that I'm going to eat from the fruit of my lips. The question is, what is it you're going to eat tomorrow? All right. All right. Okay. It's like a farmer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's like a farmer. A farmer cannot plant collard green seeds, but go out and inspect carrots. Come on. He cannot plant carrots and then expect to pick up peaches tomorrow. Whatever a farmer wants to harvest tomorrow, he must plant today. Right? right. Well, so it is, Elder Green, with our words. If we don't plant the right thing today,
be messed up today. But if you keep adding fuel to the fire, come on, oh, I hate this man. I hate this man. I hate coming home. He got on my nerve. His cologne stink. His feet stink. Everything about the man stink. I can't stand him or his mama. I guarantee you. I don't care how good your day has been. On the way home, what you've been planting will now begin to come up and you begin to eat the fruit of that harvest. I told a story some time ago about a gentleman who used to work with me. And I promise you, every day, sometimes 10 times a day, he walked around the office and kept saying, my back is killing me. My back is killing me. I said, hey, man, how you doing? Man, my, my back is killing me. I mean, he, he gave me a whole grocery list. He had back problems, bronchitis, and his kids, his wife. I said, hey, man. And I promise you, if, if everybody came in the office asking the same thing, he gave them a whole truckload. But he kept using the phrase, it's killing me. It's killing me. And so one day the man went home, and guess what? They found him dead in the bed. Now, we cannot say the devil did that. When the Bible says clearly, death and life is in your mouth. Amen. You can't keep calling Junebug crazy and stupid and, and then expecting him to get better. Amen. Come on. You can't keep saying, God, I have nobody to help me out. That's the reason no one's helping you out. Because, you watch this, many of us, watch this down, we prophesy our own doom. You can't keep prophesying doom and gloom into your own life and then blame the devil. Right. You know what? There's only one person who gets blamed more than God, and that's the devil. Right. The devil is always blamed for everything. The devil, either the devil did it or the devil made you do it. <laughs> but watch this. Have we ever considered the fact that some of the junk that's happening in my life is because, watch this now, I opened the door for it. The Bible says that we, the angel of the Lord, encamp around about me. Now, Satan cannot get past the angel of the Lord that's encamped around about you. That's right, right. But if you open the door, All right, right. you're the one who said, devil, come on, get me. Not God. The angel didn't did retire. Watch this. You gave him a break. <laughs> and there's too much garbage going on in society for me to give my angels any time off. All right. All right. Are you hearing me? Every day I must confess the angels of the Lord stand guard and surround me. Right. Are you hearing me? Because if I don't give voice to it, can you imagine? I wonder how many of you all have little fat angels over there doing nothing. Right. Angels over there, way over way. Tell me what, here comes Santa Claus. No, that, no that's your angel. He's fat. He's, he, he's not working enough. You know why? Because you did not give your angel an assignment. All right. Now, watch this. Many folks, many God's children don't believe in the angels. Some of God's folk don't believe in the angels. Watch this. Many of God's children live by happenstance. You heard it before. Whatever will be, will be. Case okay, sarah, sarah. Or, or watch this. We, we want to call for God. Well, if it be the Lord's will. When you know what the Bible says, I can, God says, command ye me concerning the works of my hand. God says, if I say I can do it, I want you, watch this, God said, I want you to hold me accountable to what I said I'll do. But Mr. Joyce, if I don't know what God said he'll do, I'll keep, well, I guess if God, I, I know he's able, I guess if he wants to, he'll do it. He said he would do it. It's amazing. Your kids have more faith in you than you have in God. Consider this. When I was growing up, I never, I never, ever, not one time was I ever worried about the mortgage being paid. I was not. I didn't ask mama, how she going to pay it? Didn't ask daddy, how they going to pay it? I didn't care. 
somebody. If I am his child and thank God that I am, it becomes his responsibility to take care of me. The Bible is clear. Every need he supplies. But if I'm going out, oh dear God, I wonder how I'm going to do it. Watch this. I'm going to say it. Like you said, I wonder how I'm going to make ends meet. That's the reason you can't make it meet because you want to do it. God says clearly, I'm, the, I'm your supplier. Watch this. If God then is my, my supplier, Mr. Gina, the supplier never is empty. He's never a void of supplies for my life. But I won't ask him for it if I don't think I can get it. Let me see if I can say it like this. When was the last time you asked a, a poor man, a homeless man, for some money? Think about it. When was the last time you asked a person on the street for some advice? You don't. You know why? Because you were saying if, if it worked, if it was gonna work, well, if it was gonna work, it would work for him or her. But watch this. There are folk who have master degrees who are homeless. I'm gonna give you an example. You know the guy who comes in here sometime? Uh, uh, Richard? Rich, yes. If you ever engage that man in a conversation, he will surprise you. Okay. Amen. One time I come and engage him in a conversation, this man thought I pulled out words, I went and got my phone. So wait a minute, uh-uh. <laughs> said, Lord, what that word mean? But to look at him, you wouldn't know. Nope. Which means then, he only wants this. Who knows what he said Amen. to get him where he is? Amen. Who knows what trends are acting in his life that caused his whole life to change? Watch this. His mind didn't change. Just how he conducted his way of doing things changed. And so it is with a believer. If your mind does not change to understand that God is my source. And watch this. When I confess the word of God, what I'm doing is putting myself in agreement with what God has already said. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Elder Green, if I said, tell Sister Carolee, I said, I want to see her after service. She couldn't tell you, I don't believe Pastor told you that. I guarantee you she will wait until after service. Uh, she didn't hear me say it, she heard you say it. Yeah. But because you were my voice, you only repeated what I said, and her response was based on what she thought I told you to tell her for me. Oh, well, how much more is it with your God? Oh, right. When you confess the word of God, what you are doing is you are telling your trouble what God has already said about your trouble. Oh, right. Come on. Sometimes you ought to remind the devil what God said his destiny is going to be. Amen. They were telling you you will never get healed. They were, guess what? You will never get out of hell. You will never be blessed. <laughs> you will never stop sit from burning. You're going to burn, baby, burn. Sing to him, glory to God. Tell him. Come on. You want to set him, you want to set him up? Tell him what his destiny is about. Come on. I guarantee you, nobody wants to hear that I, that, that I ain't going nowhere fast. Come on. Remind him, devil, hold up. You forgot I have more authority than you have. Come on. But if you don't know your covenant right, he will talk to you and I, I'm preaching that. Hold on, sorry, slow down. I, have, I hate that joker. I do. That's a strong word, but I hate him to the bone. He will talk to you out your blessing. And then watch this, he will make you agree with him and you will talk yourself out the blessing. What if Abram had to stop saying, my name is Abraham? Consider this. What if Abram had stopped saying, I'm Abraham? God said, your name should be no more called Abram, but should be called Abraham. Now, Abram had to go around all these folks who for all these years have been calling him, hey, hey, what's up, hey? Oh, hey, what's up, man? And then they got to change their tone and say, hold tight. I'm called Abraham. Now, I can see for the first few weeks, we, we cool with that. You know, it's like having been called Abraham is like having a nickname. 
Michael had, had a uh, nickname that stuck. Okay, it's like having a grown son and you still call him Junior. <laughs> or worse than that, the man got grandkids and you call him, come here, Parker, hey, Parker, in. The man, gray hand ball. Don't, don't call that boy Parker. <laughs> come on, come here, Parker. Glory to God. Call that boy by his name. Don't stop me throwing in church, glory to God. <laughs> now, watch this. At first, I'm sure some folk were still saying Abram. But watch this. Over time, Abraham caught on. That's what we're trying to say. If you just start saying the right thing, over time, it'll catch on. Now, watch this now. You, you have to bypass your common sense. Because common sense says, look at it. That's not what you said. That's not what you see. That's not how you feel. And watch this. Have anyone ever had the devil tell you you will always be broke just when the male person bring your bank ledger? And if you look at it and it shows an overdraft fee. Oh, dear God. They were saying, you ain't gonna ever have no money. And now you going, well, no, I'm 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 blessed. I, I, I think I'm blessed. God said, well, I'm supposed to be blessed. And you find yourself bagging down from the devil based on what you see. Amen. Baby, if you got cotton balls in your pocket and they barking out dust, you keep saying you blessed. Amen. Come on, I don't care if folks say, I don't care how many folks laugh at you and tell you you win the money. Oh, I got it, whether that it's in heavenly places in my heavenly account, and I'm waiting on the release to hit, to hit my account. Come on, somebody. Right. Somebody say, it's getting ready to hit. Ain't it day now? Ready to hit. In this day now, tell God, it's getting ready to hit your account. Yes. You live talking about all day. And some of y'all, some of y'all just ought to cut it out talking about, oh, well, you folks say, come on, dollar. Ain't no money. See, look. Cut your pockets out your pants then, bless God. You're going to always show them you broke. Stop doing that. Come on, somebody. Right. Right. <laughs> Glory to God. That's for somebody. Praise the Lord. Where was that here? Uh, okay, thank you. Many times, you know, what we do is give the devil permission to invade our lives. Wow. Wow. I don't want to ever give the devil permission to invade my life. Every time that joker show up, the word, watch this, Write it down, thank you, Holy Spirit. The word must be there to bring resistance against what he's doing. The right. word of God must be there or be present to make to bring resistance against what the devil is doing. If there is no word in you to bring resistance against the devil, every time he shows up in your life, you want to believe what he says more than what the word of God says. This is why it's important that you and I meditate on God's word. Because you're all of a sudden, what the word of God does is paint a picture in your imagination. Mm -hmm. Now consider this. If, if I say it over and over again, it moves to an image in my head. All right. And once the image is in my head, the devil can't move it out your head. Right. You must relinquish right. that thought to him. Watch this. Have anybody... Have the devil ever put a bad image in your mind? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now watch this. Anyone ever try to, try to try to outthink the image? You can't do it. That's how you know. I've tried it. Something don't come to my mind, I'm going like, mm -mm. but I'm saying it in my head. Mm -mm. And the moment I, the moment I think I, I, it's all under control, the thought comes back. But the moment I open my mouth, Devil, you alive, get out of my head. Now the thought he brings in has to stop. The image he brings in comes down because I challenge the thought he brought in my head. Because what does now with a thought comes an image? If you don't think the right thought, you won't get the right image. And if you have the wrong image, you will always follow after the wrong thoughts. Are you following me so far? And so watch this now, God has placed the responsibility, watch this, not on him, on you. Amen. Somebody say, it's on, me. it's on me. Now, I know what you're saying, Tom, talking to yourself. You wish that God would do it, but God's not, watch this, God is not going to do it for you. That's something you would do for yourself.
yourself. This is why Paul said, or Romans, he says, he says, don't be conformed or fashioned to this world system. Right? He said, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The question is why? That you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Paul says, as your mind transforms, watch this now, your life will transform. As your life then transforms, those who saw you before the transformation will see it in your life. And watch this, all the glory goes to God. Okay, maybe y'all missed that one. Anybody ever ran into somebody who knew you before you got saved? They go, man, you look different. Man, you know you don't put on 10 pounds. But what they see is the glory of God on your life. Amen. Right? There's something about you that they can't explain. You know it's God's glory. You know it's the glory of God, God's power, God's anointing on your life. But they think it's just something. Right? But what it is that, is that what's changing on me is that because I put on the mind of Christ, Right? And begin to plant faith-filled words in my life. What used to be is no longer there because God has transformed me, watch this, by his power, but the power of his words through my mouth. Amen. Watch this. You recall when Jesus was uh, getting ready to be crucified, he told the disciples, he says, go into the city, you will find a coat tied. Now, he says, Tell the owner of the coat, the master has need of it. Now, here they are walking into town, and the coat is right where they said it'd be. Now, the owner of the coat does not see Jesus. But they said what he told them to say. What this? Come on, come on. Follow me, class. He said, they said, oh, what y'all, I, I had bought my Cadillac. He said, the master has need of this Cadillac, this coat, this donkey. The owner of the donkey gave up the donkey, not because he saw Jesus, but because they said that the master needed the donkey. Are you following me? And he gave it up based on what they said. Now, him and y'all, it worked the same way. When the devil don't want to lose himself, you tell him, devil, hold on a minute. God said God says, by his life, I'm healed. Watch this. Our minds don't even think to that degree that we can tell somebody I'm healed based on how you feel. But when I say what God says, I can do it even if I don't feel anything. Are you following me? See, I'm still confessing this building even though I don't see it in the natural. But I can't tell you how many times I saw it in my mind. Tonight, uh, about 20, uh, 20 came upstairs, and I got a picture right there in the window. He said, oh, pastor, whose uh, church is this? I said, oh, that's ours. That's ours. Amen. And you should have saw the, the look on his face. It was priceless. He's like, really? Oh, yeah, that's our church. Amen. Because see, the image had to be in here before it gets in here. Amen. David said, watch this now, thy word have I... Hid in my heart. Amen. Now, why does the word have to be hidden in your heart? The Bible said anything that is not of faith is sin. Amen. And so when I am challenged, I cannot allow doubt to come up. Amen. And so I must activate my faith so that I don't sin against God. Amen. Now, Amen. the only way I don't sin against God is to have his word hid in my heart. Amen. So when the challenges come up in my life, faith Meets the challenge. Yes. Yes. Come on, class, say faith. faith. Meets the, the challenge. Come on, say faith. faith. Meets the, the challenge. It is not that you and I will not have challenges. But what this, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, wherever the word is, there is a void of doubt. That's good, y'all. Put it down there. Wherever faith is, there is a void of doubt. Wherever faith is, there is a void of doubt. I'll say it again. Wherever faith is, there is a void of doubt. Yes. See what this? The Bible says, light and darkness cannot dwell together. Right. If I cut off all the lights in this building, it's going to be a black.
like it in here. But if I light one candle, one flashlight, immediately darkness has to go. Wherever faith is, doubt is pushed out. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. But now you can't have faith if you have no word. Are you following me? You cannot have faith without word. So then faith coming by hearing. Now watch it now. Faith does not come as a result of having heard. Are you following me, class? Faith comes as a result of hearing the word over and over and over again. I was telling a pastor today, I said one of the reasons God's children are so defeated in their lives is because they hate Bible class. They can't stay in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And watch this. The reality is, most of them don't read nothing after they leave church. Yes. Come on. Yes. Now, God has made it so easy for us. It's on, it, 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 it's on, on your cell phone, mm -hmm. your iPad, the radio, the television, the internet. Mm -hmm. Come on. And you find somebody walking on feet, quoting the Bible. It's everywhere. But tell me, please, somebody, why is it so difficult for God to get his children to read his love letter? All right, all right. All right. Amen. If the word of God is the entrance to light, and it is, yes. then what God is really saying, Elder Green, is that my life does not have to stay in darkness because if I got the word, the word brings light. Yeah. Anywhere you are not sure of God's opinion on the matter, find out what God said about it. Amen. Are you following me? But watch this. We rely on other folk to tell us. Sometimes folk tell you wrong. Amen. You can't ask a novice what, God, what God's word says. Are you hearing me? Amen. Today, I was at a bank, and uh, young lady, she, she, uh, I was casting some checks. And she said, you must be a pastor. I said, yeah, I'm a pastor. You know, I'm, I'm trying to find my, my pastor hat or something. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? She said, I can just tell. I said, I said, well, by the way, you responded. You must have either dated a pastor, been married to a pastor, had a bad experience. She said, yeah. She said, I, I was dating a minister. And you know, when my concern is up, oh, baby, what did he do? You know, it's always him. It was her. But anyway, <laughs> and so she said, well, uh, and so she started asking me questions, you know, trying to get me caught up, right? Kind of found she one of the Israelites, and I was, I was loving it. Said, Come on, I love it. Come on. I said, oh, you want, you want to talk Bible, girl? Come on. We can talk Jesus. Come on. You know, I mean, you know, I, I know about one or two scriptures, you know, a few. And so, long story short, trying to catch me up, right? You know, but well, you shouldn't celebrate Christmas. I said, Baby, first of all, anybody, anytime folk want to celebrate Jesus, you let them do it. Amen. Well, how come Jesus didn't celebrate Christmas? I said it because he never celebrates himself. Amen. That's what he made us for. Amen. And by now, the bank is closed, and it's just me and the security guard, and the workers. I stood up right there if I had power to talk to him. Come on. Amen. You can't let the devil make you back down. Amen. This is why you must for the word of God for yourself. Are you hearing me? Amen. And so, when the enemy comes against you, the Bible says this, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is of a standard against it. Who's the it? The enemy. Amen. What's the flood? The word of God. Amen. If there is no word in you, All right. when the enemy comes, and he's coming, yes, he but you can't flood him with the word if you don't have no words. Are you following me, class? And so I don't understand why church folk, they hate. How come everybody who goes here isn't here tonight? They ain't watching, hey, y'all. But they should be here to make sure the word can watch this be activated in their lives. Now, these are the same folks who've been tested by the devil. Are you hearing me? And walking every week in defeat, every Sunday, Lord, I'm sorry, I'll fail you again. I'll tell you why. If you keep failing because there's a word deficit. Right. Are you following me? Right. And so I move on, I move on. And so over the course, y'all, of this lesson, 
But I want to show you how you can use your mouth to turn your world around. The Bible says the tongue, something that is like a rudder. Anybody ever been on a cruise before? A cruise? A cruise? Anybody ever been on a duck in, uh, in the water? <laughs> you know, when a duck you roll, you skip pedal. Ah, forget it anyway. <laughs> Either way I go, there's a rudder on the back of the boat that you don't see. But a big old ship mm -hmm. is being turned by the rudder. You don't know how it's doing it. You don't know what it's doing. But all you know is the guy in the the, uh, the, the bow up there got, got the big old wheel. He's turning. Now you would think that as fast as it's turning, the boat should be going in circles. But it's going ever so slow. Amen. Right? But well, watch this. The devil is telling you what you're saying is not working. But watch this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now God talking loud tonight. The moment you said it, it started working. Come on, that's good. That's good. All right. All right. The moment you said it, it started working. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The moment you said it, something in the spirit began to change. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. The moment you opened your mouth and began to declare faith-filled words over your life, the thing you prayed about began to change the moment you said it. All right. Now, the devil is going to come and bring opposition Amen. to see how long you're going to keep saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what you said. Yeah, right. And many times, we're the one, watch this, who straighten the rudder back out. All right, Amen. The boat is turning. All right. Slowly got to turn. Step by step, inch by inch. Don't play. Y'all seen the honeymoon. Come on. Y'all getting all brain like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Come on, it's turning really, really slow. But see, <laughs> you mad because it's not turning like that on a dime. You didn't get where you were over one day confession. I know, that's right. Look at this. I wonder how many folks think sick because that's all they say. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Now, watch this. James Brown did all kind of crazy stuff. Don't get me wrong. James Brown, y'all, James Brown was all about boy in, in, in the day. But what was James Brown fit the term? I feel good. One time I saw James Brown was high the kite over in China. He came out there and said, James Brown, how the cousin. He was high over I feel good. I feel good. He, he was on the news in, in a scandal. How the kind? Jay Brown, he said, I feel good. I feel good. But that was his face. I feel good. Jay Brown was the oldest, best looking black man in a long time. Come on. You just see Jay Brown's skin wasn't wrinkled up. Come on. He kept his permanent place for a long time. Come on, somebody. Come on. Man, I'm eight years old. He's still, he's still doing splits. Man, I, <laughs> come on. Man, I only imagine doing. Come on, somebody. Come on, God. <laughs> well, man, God. Man, if I do that, <laughs> I, I may, oh, may not get back up. <laughs> no, man, God. But Jay now was like, you, you saw his conscience. Come on, don't, don't play me. And then they would get out there and spin around and sweat them up. Man, yo, good. They'll blow you, huh? Because they can say, I feel good. <laughs> All right, now, we danced off of it. We had fun with him. Sitting on got high with him. But he kept saying what he he kept saying what he said. And watch this. He lived out what he said. Amen. Are you following me? Now, if a sinner can do it, yes. if a sinner can do it, Amen. how much more is you and I as God's children if we open our mouth and say what God said? Watch this. Oh. Mama said over in 1 John, I believe. Uh, John 1, 12, it says, to as many as received him, yeah. to them gave he power Amen. to become the sons of God. Amen. What's it now? As many as would believe right. on his name. All right. All right. <laughs> Which means then, you got to believe this word. Yeah. Amen. You got to believe it. Catch him and say, you got to believe this word. Listen, you can't, you can't let nothing keep you from believing what God says. Even when
even don't look like what you're saying is working, you keep on, maybe you can keep on turning it. You keep on turning it. And you keep on saying it. Because it's turning supernaturally. Who was that? Who was that pray? Uh, I believe it was Jacob who prayed and the devil for 21 days held up his prayer. Daniel, thank you, Daniel. Pray. But God said, oh, I heard the prayer and I released your answer. But the devil came and watch this, the prince of Persia or the prince over that region came and held up your prayer. Watch this. Is it possible that the demon you're praying against is now taking your prayer and capturing it because your faith has been caught up with what you're saying? It's one thing to say a thing. Watch it now. It's one thing to say it. But then to believe what you say. It's almost like your children. You tell them, keep doing that, I'm going to get you. Keep doing that, I'm going to get you. Keep doing it, I'm going to get you. They ain't broke stride. But the moment you go to 10, I told you. And then they see Legion come out, of, come out of you. They go, what? They put on brakes. Come on, anybody been there? Because they know that now mama or daddy is at that breaking point. This is the reason of Pastor Martha, my kids, I, I, I told them one time. After that, they were singing, oh, say again. Singing, singing Star and Stripes. I was dropping it. You know why? I ain't saying it twice. Because I don't never know. The first time I said it, I meant it then. All right. Now, come on. Before you condemn me, whenever I tell the devil to get off my life, I meant what I said when I said it. All right. And watch it now. I believe that he's supposed to get off of me when I say it. Right. See, watch this. What, 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 we, what we do is we don't believe that we have the authority to bind the hand of the devil. Watch this. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, the eighth chapter says, What is man? But thou art mindful of him. And thou hast clothed him with glory and honor. And thou hast made him, watch it now, a little lower than the angels. Now, don't think little fat angels from heaven. That word angels in the Hebrew means uh, Elohim. Elohim in the Hebrew means, watch it now, the Godhead. And you follow me. So God is saying, he said, I made you a little lower than myself. And so if I'm lower than God, if God is here, I'm under God, then everything under me and God is under my authority. And so if it's under my authority and my dominion, if since I'm made in God's image and in God's likeness, then it gives me the authority to bind the hand of the devil. All right. See, when, on the police department, a police officer is not the department. He works for the department. A police officer is not the city of Chicago. He works for the city of Chicago. Yeah. And so whatever laws that the city of Chicago set in effect, mm -hmm. that police officer has the right to carry it out. Watch this, whether he or she likes me or not. All right. All right. Watch this, I'm going to go one deeper. And because I live in the city, mm -hmm. the laws govern me whether I like the laws or not. All right. Right? All right. And so watch this. It's the same way in the spirit realm. When I understand that I'm the one in charge, mm -hmm. and the enemy, since he's under my feet, nothing under your feet can control you. All right, now. If it's All right. under your feet. All right. Here's the problem. You don't believe it's under your feet. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. The other day, I challenged Tony, I challenged some, some pastors. I said, what do preachers really believe? Greater she, let's hear me. All right now. All right. All right. We say it. Mm -hmm. We part it. Yeah. Come on. We'll hook greater if he does in me. And it sounds good. They got a whole row. Folk go to shopping. All right. They believe it as long as they're in church. 
Do you believe it when you face a, de a devil? Come on, that's right. That's right. All right. That's right. Come on. Do you believe it when he's coming in your, and he, when he's raising hell in your life? Do you believe what you just said? Right. See, listen, you cannot use the Bible, y'all, as a book of good cliches because they sound good. Right. Amen. That's why I tell folks, yeah, I'm not impressed by how the Bible you quote. Right. What can you do in, in a hard time? Right. Come on now. Come on. In a hard time, under pressure. What are you saying the same word when your life is under stress? All right. All right. Then somebody called me and said, Pastor, I'm just so stressed. I said, your hair, <laughs> what you do, cut your hair? They said, no, it fell out. I'm under so much stress. I said, why? If Jesus paid it all, then why is your hair falling out? All right, yeah. Come on, tell the truth. Come on. Come on. I'm just so nervous. You better learn how to activate your faith. And begin to use your mouth. Watch this as a weapon against the devil. That's it. That's it. Oh, dear God. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I got a fast point. Go to Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 54, 17. Y'all watch this. I have read this scripture. I have quoted it. I, I repeated it. I put it on my heart, in my chest, in the house. I mean, I've said it over and over again, but today I today I saw it. Come on, right? Come on, man. Now, it's in line with our text tonight. Watch this. Are you there? Yes. It says, no weapon, no weapon. that's formed against thee shall prosper. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. And, come on, class, what? Come on, class, read it. What? Look at me, look at me, look at me. What comes from a tongue? All right. Come on, class. No hard question. What comes from a tongue? Words. Words. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Which means the devil has avenues to mess my life up. All right, all right. And what this words are one of the avenues. But God said, that shall rise against me, what this in judgment, what this thou shall condemn it. Now, what this class, God did not say he would condemn it. God said, if the word spoke against you, if not going to prosper, then you must open your mouth and say something against the word said against you. Come on. Are you hearing me? Well, here's your, what do we do? Well, I don't want to offend nobody, so I want to just say the devil is a liar. Well, this. How come saints change when they get saved? Come on. Before they get saved, somebody called me something, but you cuss them out. I don't want to ask all the, all the ex couples to say it, man, because I ain't no church. But come on. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to use me. I'm going to say it, cussing. I don't. I said I was, though. I ain't cussing now. Before I got set free, though, but I don't blast you. I was, I, I, I was saying general, glory to God. I cuss you. Cuss your mama. Cuss your dog. Cuss your, I cuss your dreams. <laughs> I was. Yeah. That little girl, she was scared of me. She thought I was the meanest guy on the planet. Amen. I was. <laughs> she did. She said, you, you always mad. Well, I would go bowling best guy, and, and, and if somebody gets smart, what you say? Yes. I bet you won't say that again. <laughs> Come on. Right. Your pastor was a fighter, man. I didn't care. Ask Brother Sarge. They called I was going to go four feet, 80 pounds soaking wet. Well, I, I fight you and cut you at the same time. I wasn't scared. Right, but how come right. we, get, we get saved and now we, we punks now? All right now. All right. Come on. If the devil talking to you, talk back to his butt. I'm sorry to him. Come on. If somebody is talking to feet in your life, don't sit in the oh, well, I'm trying to be like this. Just open your mouth and talk back to somebody. Right, Come on. Right, Before right. telling you, you won't ever be nothing. The devil is a liar. I'm already something right now. Come on. I'm God's child. I'm a king's kid. I'm the head, not the tail. Come on. Do not open your mouth and talk back to whatever talking to you. Never right. say you ain't you ain't healed by his stripes up here. Come on. I was healed.
no fourth yes. day, I was healed before I got sick. Yes. Don't fuck with me. Before, before sickness showed up, the price to be healed was already paid for me. I give you name. But if you sit there and don't talk back to the devil, he can be in your ear. You sit. You go, yeah, I'm sick. You're going to die. Yeah, I'm going to die. And now you move from hope to hopeless. Are you hearing me? And when a man moves from hope to hopeless, now unless God intervenes, you don't die like you said. Are you hearing me? Come on, saints. Can't go out and like, oh, I'm scared, you know. It's the other day I heard a preacher say, he said, he said, yeah, you know, I told my church that uh, we don't cancel a certain service because you know it uh, uh hope you ain't watching. <laughs> because I'm gonna say it now. He said, you know, it's getting dangerous outside getting dangerous, you know, we get we in bad times. Mm. And Pastor Mark, I'm sitting there. And I want to punch him in the mouth. I, I do. I do. I did. I'm, I'm sitting like he's here and I'm here. And I'm going to go, I'm like, just as my folk getting killed when the sun is up. Come on. Folks getting contact in daytime now. Come on. Folks getting robbed and while the sun's up. Don't tell me I'm going to be a hostage in my house because the time is changing. If God is God, if God can't protect me, come on. He's God in my house and out of my house. His blood works in my house and out of my house. Angels work for me in my house and out of my house. Are you hearing me? I refuse to let the devil keep me hostage. I don't care how much time changes. God don't change. Come on, sir. If God ain't changing, he the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then bless God, I'll go where I want to go. When I want to go, watch this. Come on, God, let's do it. Are you hearing me? Come on. You have the Holy Ghost inside of you. Paul says, Paul says, Paul says, Paul says, we have this treasure. All right. All right. All right. In earthen vessels. You have a, put your hand right here. You got a treasure inside of you. Yes. Come on. Man, like when folks say, <laughs> people say, yes, that's right, I'm all that. Yes. So yeah, I'm all that and some. Because I got a treasure inside of you. Come on. I got the Holy Ghost of God inside of me. I got Emmanuel, the Son of God, living inside of me. And watch this. Everywhere I go, I take it with me. Are you here? Now watch this. Because you have the Holy Spirit does not exempt you from trouble. That's right. That's right. But watch this. What Holy Spirit is, is like a boat in water. See, the water will drown you, but the boat got to hold you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Right the boat is designed to hold you on what's designed to kill you. Right Are you hearing me? But some of y'all are jumping ship. Uh -oh. oh, they're going to stop. Everybody jump. Now, come on. <laughs> come on. Think about it. If I'm already in the boat, <laughs> at least stay in the boat. All right, now. But do tell the my second thing. Stay in the boat. In the boat. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Well, you recall, I believe it's in the uh, book of Acts, when God sent an angel and told, and told Paul, so now, Paul, a storm is coming. Uh -huh. It's called your rock of them. Yes. That name scared me. I'm almost not your rock of them. I'm going to have a child call it, call it your rock of them. <laughs> I'm going to start fighting and say, what's your name? Your rock of them. <laughs> Come on. That sounds scary, don't it? What's your name? Here he is, 240. 228. <laughs> okay, 243. <laughs> In blue trunks, your rock of them. <laughs> He's like, ah, it's a storm. But watch this. The angel of the Lord came and told Paul, he says, that a storm is coming. But watch this. He said, nothing going to be lost but the ship. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. A storm is coming. Yes. Watch it now. Nothing going to be lost but the ship. All right, all right. A storm is coming. Nothing going to be lost but the ship. Now watch this. When you read the text, Paul turned right around and told the very folk who was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. He 
He said, don't worry, a storm is coming, but nothing's going to be lost but the ship. Now, they told the, the, the keepers of the prison, says, hey, if they jump ship, jump with them and kill them. Okay, 
I'm going to come in, in your room. If you don't think God can do it, why are you calling him? Why are you calling him? The reason I call him is because I know he can do it. Come on. I pray because I know he hears me. But I put the word, I know because I know the word works in my life. Are you hearing me? And my time is all gone. Give him a hand, praise God. Come on. Let's go with it, God. I'll see you again here next week. That's my introduction.